Ignacio Canseco, a coffee producer from southern Mexico, is just one of many cash crop farmers struggling to keep his head above water due to fluctuations in global food prices. Este, nosotros estamos preocupados porque nosotros, cuando sube el, el precio del café, entonces nosotros este, no tenemos este, café y cuando estamos produciendo nos preocupa que vuelva a bajar la bolsa. Food prices have risen so much in recent years that economists are now calling on the G20 to help stabilize the situation. The global food crisis is now being blamed in part on the world's financial markets, as Murray Worthy from the World Development Movement explains. Food speculation is basically the way in which banks and other financial traders can essentially bet on the price of food, and this takes place through what are known as futures markets. So these were originally set up to help farmers and food producers and buyers to kind of uh, manage their risk of prices changing over time. But instead what we're seeing now is other people coming in who've got no connection with the food supply whatsoever coming in and using these markets just to bet on the rising and falling price of food. Professor Neil Kinnard explains how such speculation pushes food prices up and out of the reach of poorer communities. Speculation, particularly over speculation, uh, means that investors are perhaps looking at the trend of a price, they'll see it going up, they'll start buying it and therefore they'll exacerbate the trend, driving food prices and commodity prices away from fair values and pushing the most vulnerable, the poorest, further into chronic hunger. However, back in Mexico, hunger is not the only repercussion of financial speculation. As coffee farmer Lorenzo Canseco explains, it has a knock-on effect on many aspects of poverty. La mayor parte del dinero que ganamos va a la, a la compra de, de los alimentos. Hay algunas este, familias que, que no les alcanza el dinero, están comprando los alimentos y entonces ya los, los niños que van a la escuela ya no tienen útiles, ya no tienen, este, ya no tienen ropa como para que asistan a una escuela. It would appear that economic speculation is getting so out of control that even bankers such as Kenneth Schved from Rabobank are now eager for the food markets to be stabilized. We are looking at some sort of regulations or some sort of movements or some sort of actions which will limit the volatility in the market as you move into the future. I'm not really worried about the large money coming in. I'm worried about the coming in, moving out, and coming in, moving out. With around a billion people worldwide going hungry and record food prices now affecting us all, almost 500 economists, including Neil Kinnard, are now calling on the G20 to take action. Limits could be set at reasonable levels, say about 25% of the market, which would maintain good market function, probably enhance it, but also dampen food and commodity price movements. Put simply, the highs would not be so high and the lows would not be so low.